Hey guys, I know it's been a while since I made a video, but uh, we've been working on some cool stuff. And one of the things I want to show you today that I couldn't find, this might already exist, so don't yell at me if it already does. If it already does, awesome. We're going to make it here together, but it's called GIST tabs. So if you're wondering what a GIST is, is it's by GitHub. It's a way to make a quick piece of code. So I can go and just say GIST, right? And I can make a new piece of code. So I can say, you know, PHP, you know, tab doesn't seem to work. <laughs> Echo, hi, name it, you know, test.php, whatever, a test. And I can create a public gist. And now I've created this coded file with syntax highlighting, and I can send this link to anybody, and uh, they can see my code. It's also under Git version control, so I actually, actually, if I come in here and edit it, and change something like, you know, change hi to hello, and save it, now it, it's, it's this one, but it's actually, there's two versions you see over here. So it's Git, it's Git version control, but the gist is just a, a piece of code. And gist is like hugely popular if you don't know what it is, so this is gist. Anyway, what gist tabs is, is a way to take a multiple set of gists and make them tab view. So let me show you an example. So this is the new OpenJS Grid version 2, which is like just about finished. I know it's been like eight months I've been busy, but it's the brand new OpenJS Grid, completely object oriented. It's got a cool slider thing. This is actually, I did not intend for this to be the first preview of OpenJS Grid, but boom, there you go. It's like a thousand times faster. It's awesome. I'm really happy. And this is the new landing page for it, which looks way better than the old landing page, which was sucky. Anyway, I want to show you code examples. So down here are code examples. Now there's a bunch of different ways you can show code examples. You can do the way I used to do it, which is square bracket OpenJS. So this is the old OpenJS grid. And you can see how I did code examples here, which is basically uh, in the in the code you actually write pre tags and you put your code in there and you know you're using sort of JavaScript to doing that so that's one way to do it um, and there's a couple other free tools out there uh, one of the cool ones is JS Fiddle which is basically where you put some code in like uh, you know so actually actually what I'll do is I'll copy my PHP actually you can't you, so here's the problem is you can't do PHP but just to show you here's some HTML and here's some Here's some JavaScript, right? Boom, JavaScript. Save. And then what I can do is I can actually go to share. And then here's the embed. It's an iframe. So if I go to the landing page here, and if I, where are we at? We're at the top here. Down here, where am I doing my gist? OK, so forget the gist for a second. I'll put the, uh, I'll put the JS fiddle thing here. So if I refresh, here's a fiddle. So it's this really cool iframe thing. This is where I got the idea from. It shows you the code. And JS fiddle, you can actually run the code, which is really nice. Um, but the problem is, is it doesn't do PHP. And really, I'm not using, I'm not using this tool to let people execute code. I'm using this to show code off. Now, what's really nice about JS fiddle is that it's one line and it gives you this beautiful looking thing but obviously you'd have to restyle it to match the site or you would keep it as JS Fiddle. Uh, CodePen.io is one by Chris Coyer which is another cool site to do code. It has the same thing. If you go to these guys and you share it and you look at the, uh, let's see, an embed code. Embed. So here's the HTML and looks like someone made Siri, which is interesting. But if I take Chris Coyer's version, which is um, a pre-tag with looks like a script tag. I don't know exactly what's going on there. But let's take a look at that. So here's Chris Coyer's one. So again, cool, and it's running. But again, same thing. It's executing code. It doesn't have gist. I've spent way too long on this introduction. Let me get right to what the point is. Gist is cooler because you can put any piece of code in there and it's formatted and it's under git source control and here it is now the problem is it's not tabbed like the other guys so you're like well how did you get multiple things in here you only put one line in like only one line of code how did I get three things well if we actually go to uh, to click on this guy so we'll click on ajax.php we see here that here's the gist and I've made some modifications but there's actually three and you can even add more files so if I go to edit 
and down here I can say add another file. So on any gist you can add multiple files, right? It's git source control, it has to do with files. Files control, that's what git is all about. So I basically name each file what I want, that's the key here, gotta name each file with the extension you want. That was the one kind of annoying thing about it. And then I just added the three files I wanted, saved it out, and boom, there's my gist. And so what that allows me to do is, here's my gist, my, I can send this to anybody, but now I can embed it with one single line. So if I go show embed, here's the embed code, I copy that, put it on my site, and now all of a sudden, not that, and now all of a sudden, I have three gists. So now the goal is, let's take these three gists and combine them into one. And that's what we're going to do right now. So sorry for that extremely long introduction. I gotta get back into the swing of making videos. Anyway, we're gonna do this in line just because it's easier. So, knowing the structure of a gist, so let's actually look at that for a second. What's awesome about gist is that uh, it's not in an iframe or anything. It's like, boom, right on the page. So the way this works is it's got a gist with the class gist and then gist file. So there's actually multiple gist files, so that's how this works. And then each gist file has a gist syntax, a highlight, each line, and then at the bottom it's got gist meta, and then just meta has some extra information. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a header and add the tabs and then add some functionality for it, right? That's the goal. So to do that, first we're going to basically grab each the main gist, right? So you might have so this is this all three of these is one gist, okay? Cuz like down here, for example, I've got another gist right here, okay? So this is these two are another gist. So first we have to loop through each gist on the page. So just dot each function so there's each gist, right? So I'll, I'll label this as I'm doing it. So each gist. Then what we want to do is uh, referen reference to this, right? So we'll say gist equals this, just so we have a reference to it. Then we're going to say hide all gists, actually all gist files, but the first one. And we're going to use a, a jQuery selector for this. So gist.find. And we're going to find the, the gist file, like I just said. Um, but we're going to uh, omit the first one, okay, like that, and we're going to dot hide. So we're basically going to get all gist files, and we're going to omit the first one, and that's going to hide all but the first one. So if we actually save that and refresh it, we can see up the top here that we only have one. So the others are here, but they're hidden. So now we've done that. Now what we want to do is create the header, right? So create the gist header. And I already have some CSS uh, down here somewhere. Yeah, so I already have some CSS written to make it look better. Could have done this in the code, much better to do it in the CSS. So knowing that that's there, uh, we are going to create the header. And to do that, we're just going to say var header equals, and we're going to create a new jQuery object here, an HTML5 header object, we give it a class of gist header, and then we will close that, and now we will have a div inside that actually is going to be a floated right panel. It's going to be a little, a little note for me, so div uh, style, I know it's inline style, float, I'll take it out in a minute, <laughs> float right padding 0.5 m's, 0.5 m, that's our style, and it's going to say uh, gist tabs by Sean Clark, and we will close the div, and then close the header. And then we need to add the header, but we can't add the header yet because we only have one. So now that we have created our header, which is going to be the same header main guy for all three of our files, Okay, we really only need one header, that's why we only made one. So now is the point where loop through each of the gist files, right? So we'll say gist.find dot gist file dot each uh, function. So now we're looping through each gist file, and the first thing that we're going to do is get some variables, right? We need some variables. So we're going to say var f name. So this is going to be the file name. File name equals this, as in the file now, dot find. And, and yeah, so so the, the name, if we inspect the page, is right here. Right, so ajax.php. So it's, it's this, which is just file, 
inside it just meta, and then there's an A tag. Okay, and it's actually the second A tag. There's no other way to label this other than it's the second A tag. Uh, just didn't give it a class, so we just have to deal with that. So find uh, dot gist meta, and then find the A tag, and then we're going to make sure we get only the second one, which is the zero one, you know, zero based. So it's one is the second one, right? And we're going to say uh, dot t t text. So that's that's the F name. And let's just confirm before we go much further that we're doing things right. So F name, F name. And this should give us three names if we did it right. And there you go. There's a lot more going on. But here's the three that go with this. Ajax, HTML setup, and scripts.js. So that's working fine. And so now we have the first name. And I'm going to paste in some two other ones because time is probably low. So we have the tab, which we're going to create. So we're creating a tab, passing it the name, and we're going to create a block, which is, I don't know why I didn't do that first, so I'm going to do that now. And I'm going to re use that cached reference instead to make life a little bit faster. OK. So there's our block, which is our whole thing. We're just storing it. Here's our F name, and here's a tab. And now we're going to add a event listener to the tab directly. Instead of adding a, we could have added a delegated event up top, but we can add it right here as well. So tab dot on click function, and now what we're going to do is we're going to basically going to say gist, which we have reference to dot find dot gist file dot hide. So we're going to find all of the files that from this gist and hide them. Then we're going to using our reference only show my block, the one that I have. Lastly, what we're going to do is outside of this, we're going to to add to the header the tab so now we're adding three tabs if we're looping three times and then finally after each file we need to append the gist well prepend really the header to the top and if we refresh uh, we see now here's a gist with three tabs that is failing when I click it doesn't like something let me see real quick to, so the reason it's doing that is because I didn't I didn't make this variable uh, local. I, it's global, which is I didn't mean to do that. So we need to put var in front of it. Sorry about that. So once we put var in front of it, uh, then now if I click the tabs, you can see that we have three tabs that are the gist tabs. And so that's a quick little thing and it's this little piece of code that we could easily turn into a jQuery plugin, which I probably will. Any, any day now, but this is basically a little piece of code you can just throw at the top with this little CSS down here, and the result is that now you can have tabs for GIST documents for putting code on the page. So I didn't know of anything else that was like this. If you do, awesome, let me know. If not, um, then boom, here you go. Awesome GIST embeds for the page, and again, they only take one line of code to put in. So for example, this one down here, in this example where I'm showing off deleting, I have another set of just tabs here. And to put that in, literally all it was was right here. That's the embed. And in the old times, in the old days, what I had, if we go to square bracket, which I, I should stop talking at this point, the video's over. But if you look at the embed here, you can see a crap ton of these ugly, ugly pre-tags all over the place and that sucks and so this solves the problem of clean code and it creates a really cool little front end for dealing with the code so hope you enjoyed the video uh, I know I rambled way too much I will try not to do that next time anyway talk to you guys soon